Rub up your engines! Now, here's some technology that makes sense. Mazda has a thing that's called co-pilot and it will pull your car over if you pass out. Now, we almost question why would you pass out in the first place? If you were drunk, you shouldn't be driving. But I mean, if somebody has a heart attack or something, hey, pretty good idea. Pull the car over and turn it off. It's almost out, they said. They're using a camera mounted, looking at the driver to see if he's passed out or not reacting. Let's hope they make the software right now. Some guy isn't just kind of blinking his eyes or, you know, looks like he's, uh, maybe he's wearing sunglasses, can't see his eyes. There's always going to be fault in software. We all know that. And of course, they're also planning on making if you're under the influence or really fatigued that it'll pull over and turn the car off. So no more sleepy drivers, the computer will stop you. And what it does is if it thinks something's happened to you, it starts flashing the lights and honking the horn, putting the four-way flashes on and it pulls over to the side and stops the car and then calls emergency services to come. Now they say this is going to hit their production cars next year in Japan, but they don't know about the U.S. because of the regulations. They don't know if the United States laws will accept this technology and allow it to be put into cars. You know, they're still whining about having side view mirrors that are cameras and not actual mirrors, things like that. There's some things that aren't allowed yet. Well, here we go with more lousy quality when Fiat owned Chrysler. Of course, now it's part of Stantis. The NHTSA, National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, is investigating the Ram HD trucks with a diesel engine and that they can stall when you go over 25 miles an hour, stop running, right? It looks like the high pressure pumps were crap. Well, if you know anything about high pressure pumps, they put out a lot of pressure. And and it turns out it looks like they didn't make them right. What a surprise. An Italian company, Fiat, having quality control problems. That's why, you know, they say Ram. You think you're getting Ram. Ram schmam. I did that video a few weeks ago. The guy brought me one of these Ram City's little delivery truck, right? Had nothing to do with Ram except the name. It was a rebadged Fiat. Totally Italian design. And this one had 15,000 miles on it. It was already burning oil. There's a lack of quality with anything the Italians do, Fiat especially. And when they took over... Chrysler really started to go even further down, which is kind of interesting when you really look at the overall picture because when Chrysler was originally purchased by Mercedes and they called it Daimler Chrysler, the quality of Chrysler actually started to go up a little bit. But the Germans were losing so much money, they got rid of it. And then the Italians bought it. And now the downward spiral has definitely taken a deep dive. I don't see quality getting better anytime soon. But if you own one of these, you want to check, see if you got one with a high pressure fuel pump that has problems and be leery that thing might just stall while you're driving down the road. It'd be one thing if it's stalled when you stop, right? Okay, you're stopped. But these things stall at over 25 miles an hour, like when you're on the highway where it's the most dangerous. Eh, like I say, no quality, don't buy the stuff. It actually is almost comical, especially Fiat. It's like one mistake after another, after another. And then they jump on another bandwagon. Kind of like reminds me of Catch-22, the famous book. And if you didn't read the book, I'm sure you saw the movie, right? Where the one guy says to the Italian as the Americans come in, oh, we love the Americans, we love the Americans. And he said, hey, when the Germans came, Oh, we love the Germans. We love the fascists. We'll jump on whatever side it is. <laughs> <laughs> Don't think quality comes from anything with the Italians taking it over. All right, just historically, you can see the handwriting on the wall. And the French aren't that much better either. So <laughs> we'll see what happens in the future with their quality. Maybe eventually all of the trucks will be made with Italian engines and stuff in it. It'll really be problematical. Owen Klassen says, what causes a car to stall when coming to a stop at a red light and drive, but not in neutral? Well, there's many things that can. Hope it's a simple thing. If you have a vacuum leak, if you have carbon on your intake where your throttle is sticking wrong, it'll make it stall. Simple things. And you can clean all the carbon off and check for vacuum leaks. Your air suck and fix it if any hoses came off. Now, I'll say it's neither of those. Well, then, Often, the torque converter in your automatic transmission strains the engine some, but they're designed so that they idle fine in drive or reverse, a little bit lower than in neutral or park, but they, they idle fine, right? But when the torque converter gets worn internally, it drags the engine too much. So when you have it in drive or reverse, the engine will stall. But in neutral or park, it's freewheeling and the torque converter doesn't put the drag on. So pray you got a vacuum leak or a dirty throttle and that it's not the torque converter going out because to fix that, you got to pull the transmission off, put a new torque converter, and that's a very expensive job. If you're cheap like me, hey, shift it into neutral then if that's the case. I drove my Celica, the torque converter is somewhat worn, but it's been worn for 10 years and it still works. You know, I don't want to shake it or stall it, I just put it in neutral. Adam Jock says, I got a 2011 Toyota Sienna. Should I use Eco or no Eco when I'm driving a car? Now, we got a lot of hills here and there, 
and it'll go in and out of eco frequently. I don't know if leaving it out of eco is better for the engine. Actually, keeping it in eco is better for the engine because then that makes it get the best gas mileage, which means the engine is revving at lower RPMs. It'll wear out less. The transmission does smoother shifts and not higher end acceleration, and the car will actually last longer. They're well made, and the computer systems are good. And yet, as you found that though, if you're going up hills and stuff, it'll turn the eco off so you get enough power. They're not stupid. They didn't make an eco mode that would go up hills like a turd. And people say, what a pile of crap. This thing doesn't run. It just bypasses it when you're going up a hill. So, no, but you just leave it on eco. They'll actually last the longest. It would wear out faster if you take the eco mode off. You just lose some acceleration. And then the Toyota software and hardware is good enough that it doesn't affect the lifespan. It'll turn the eco mode off when you really got to take off. It's the design of the car. They're well designed vehicles. These engineers put some thought into it. This isn't just, oh, let's see if this thing works. No, the Japanese spent a lot of time analyzing this stuff. And they make it to last. They also have them pretty well designed. So no, you just leave it in eco if you want it to last the longest. Your fear says, what do you think of Lucas heavy duty oil stabilizer and the pure synthetic oil stabilizer that's thinner? I hear it's good to extend the life of an engine. A lot of people love it. What do you think? Well, back in the day, we used the heavy duty stabilizer all the time because we had simple cast iron V8 engines. And when they wore, you put the heavy stuff in, they would burn less and the lubricants in it would make the worn engine last longer than it would normally. Now, modern cars have completely different setups. They use lightweight oils. And if you got like a GDI turbo, you want to use that 0W16 oil, which is very thin, but that's what it's made for. It'll make them last. Now, yes, the Lucas synthetic one is a lighter oil, but it's not that light. It's not 0W16. It's heavier than that. And you don't want to change it. You want to keep that at 0W16. Of course, they had to come up with something that was lighter weight because everybody knows you can't use the heavy stuff in the modern ones and they would lose all their sales. So they came up with that. But you really don't need it if you take care of the car. It's more for junker cars that are falling apart. So let's say years from now, you got a 0W16 oil and your engine's wearing out. Well, then you're playing a slippery slope. If you put some other stuff in that's a little bit heavier, maybe it'll last a little bit longer, but maybe it'll actually wear out faster because that heavier oil won't lube the cams. It won't get up there fast enough. And of course, in the winter, the heavier oil is thicker and it takes longer to pump up where the light one goes, goes better. I would still stick with 0W16. I would just use the right oil and fix it up. I'd still use the heavy stuff on old worn out cars that are old cars that were made to run on 10, 30 or 20, 50 or whatever, but not any of them that use the 0W10, 0W16, 0W20 because that's a thin oil and you should leave that in by itself. Well, here we go with Tesla again. They recalled 11,704 of their vehicles after they identified a full self-driving beta software error. It can cause a false forward activation that they think you're going to hit something and will unexpectedly activate the emergency stop system. Well, I even saw that in Houston with a customer that had a Jeep and it had, you know, all these safety things and the stupid machine thought that overpass was a truck, the shadow, it hit the brakes. He couldn't get it to go because the computer stopped the vehicle and then somebody rear-ended him. This kind of technology, you know, there's going to be glitches up the wazoo and don't think they're going to fix them anytime soon. And here's their explanation of it. This is how in saying it's gotten with those cars. And I quote, a communication disconnect can result in video neural networks that operate on the chip to run less consistently than expected. Talk about double speak. <laughs> <laughs> We're sorry your family's all gone because the computer didn't work as efficiently as we expected and it ran into a wall by itself. I wouldn't trust my life to these things. Anybody that does, as far as I'm concerned, they're a fool. And anybody that's promising they're going to have the self driving stuff and kind of touts it, it's kind of sneaky because they act like it's self driving. It isn't. It should not even be allowed to be called that because it's not. It doesn't work. If it ever will work, who knows? There's always going to be glitches. You know there's going to be glitches. It's software. And then if the software is okay, well, you get a hardware glitch and the same thing happens. It doesn't work right. Now, this is some models from 2017 to 2021 made, so it covers a lot of these vehicles. You know, they always seem to be messing with problems like this and think, you know, it's, it's, it's the future. It's the future. We're all going to make a lot of money while old Elon is selling billions of dollars of his own stock with his stock options where he's got no risk at all. He's not even risking anything. You're risking your money if you invest in the company, but he's not risking anything. <laughs> he has stock options. If it goes below, he doesn't lose any money. You would lose all your money, but he, oh, well, I didn't make another few billion. What the heck? So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.